Guess what time it is? Hopefully baby time. It's baby time. That hair is long. She's contract she said her contractions. I just wanna know. Hopefully, let's see what time is it after five o'clock. Baby Zeke, you sure are causing a lot of problems. He sure is. I don't know what he wants to do. He wants to go, he wants to stay. Maybe he wants to go. Now we know what kind of personality he's going to have. <laughs> Stubborn one. How are you feeling? Um, tired. Hungry. I told you we should have went to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure ain't no joke either. I guess her contractions, that's what she said. They were contractions. I don't think she did the test right to see if I was, if my water broke. I don't know. Well, that's probably why they're gonna do the sonogram, check the fluid. The sonogram will show yeah. if it did break. Because it wasn't a trickle of water, it was like, like, it just came out. And it happened three times, and it happened just a while ago. It's not water, it's not, I mean, you didn't pee on yourself and you didn't, what did she say, sweat, that it was sweat? That's not sweat. <laughs> That's not sweat. <laughs> Where's Dr. Gray when you need it? Where's mom? <laughs> right? Where's your gloves? And I'm still like, I feel like I'm still, it's still coming out. So I don't know. I don't know what's happening. But all this is different from your first pregnancy. Yeah. Yeah, because I've, I've never had my water break. I mean, I know what contractions feel like. But this is just like a lot of pressure. I don't know what it feels like to have my water break. I don't know. I just know there's stuff leaking from different places. <laughs> and I don't know if it's fluid or if it's... I don't know. Well, to be continued. Yes. Hey, fam. Hey friends, guess where I'm at again? Oh, hold on, I'm having a contraction. So, today is, I don't know what today is, today's Wednesday. Um, I woke up this morning, um, I was feeling pressure, but not like nothing out of the ordinary. <clears throat> so it was about two o'clock today. Right now it's nine, nine ten. It was like two o'clock today, and um, I was sitting on the couch, and I got up, and when I got up, like it just started, fluid started coming. <laughs> 
and so I freaked out because I was like, I don't know what it is. I don't know if my water broke. I don't know. I don't know what it was. <clears throat> so I called my doctor, and I t I told the the one of the nurses what 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 happened, and she said it sounds like your water broke. She's like, go to labor and delivery to make sure. But then I called I called my sister Fran and then she's like what am I supposed to do she's like call Sarah <clears throat> so I called Sarah Sarah called her friend she's a nurse and I explained to her everything that happened and she said it sounds like you did break your water she's like go to the go to the labor and delivery and you know see what they tell you so this is where I am I'm here they did test all that and the first test came back that um, my water didn't break. <sighs> but um, my doctor still wants to keep me here overnight again. But now I'm having contractions. And can you hear that? He has hiccups. <laughs> um, I have contractions now, and I'm still leaking a lot of fluid. I know this is a lot. <laughs> I know it's TMI, but it's this is what I'm going through. Um, I'm still leaking a lot. She had to come and change my bed, and uh, my bed sheet. Because I was, that's how much I was, yeah. Can you hear that? He has hiccups. <clears throat> so right now, I'm just here waiting. My sonogram doctor is supposed to come tomorrow morning and check on the baby and see what happens from there. But... I'm having the contractions are getting a little stronger and I'm like leaking so much right now <clears throat> I don't know what's happening they said that my water didn't break but I don't know I don't know what's happening and I haven't with my first baby my water didn't break so I don't know what it feels like I don't know what going into labor feels like so I was like I don't know what to do like should I go? Should I wait? Everything in me was like, go. We need to go. But for some reason, I wanted to wait. But I just came anyway. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just... I don't know. I know I was really frustrated yesterday. Like, I don't know. I was just frustrated and tired and I didn't get sleep that night and I don't know I was just <sighs> but I talked to my sister Sarah and she was saying you know a lot of people would kill to be where I'm at like you know so it just brought me back down and you know and I know I was being selfish and I can't be that way and I need to enjoy what's happening and like <clears throat> I don't know it's just correction on my part because it's I know I shouldn't be frustrated but it's just sometimes you know I go into that moment and I let it I just sit there and dwell in it and I know I shouldn't and so it's I don't know it's <sighs> I'm just ready <laughs> I'm just really ready. I don't know. But Sarah brought me up here. She stayed with me for a little bit. She just left. So, we'll see what happens. I'll keep y'all updated. She's going to come in at about 10, 10.30 to take my vitals and all that. And after that... 
I don't know, see what happens. I don't know. Hopefully, baby. If not, then I don't know. But these contractions are like getting bigger. <laughs> so, I will check back with y'all in a little bit. Let's go home. Wee! What did I tell you yesterday? With baby. So you probably reach here around one o'clock. Yeah. I have all going? these all these balloons here. What's today? The twenty six. Today is the twenty six. I have been there since the twenty second. <laughs> we are finally going home with little baby Ezekiel Cruz. And come. Huh. And I'm in a boy club. Yeah, big brother club. Do you want to do anything? I do. I do, I do, I do. So, when I get home, when I get settled, when I get everything in place and him in place, I will update on everything that has been going on with Zeke, with me. Oh, it's been a long, a very long, long journey. He was in NICU, he stayed there for a while. I mean, it was it was long. So, but we're going home finally with our yeah. baby, with our little baby boy. Yeah. He's perfect, he's yeah. good now. So, we will see you in a little bit. Yeah. Hey. Hi, friends. It is 26, yeah, Monday. If you hear that noise, it's the baby's bassinet. We are finally home. Oh my gosh. I think the last thing you saw, maybe, was me in one of, a ro one of the rooms, maybe? I don't know. These past five days have just been like... Oh my gosh. I'm just so like thank you lord that we're finally at home with baby <laughs> he's right there like he's um he's sleeping he just ate we just changed him he's doing good everything's good with him so let's start off by thank you to everyone who I, I'm, I'm in my husband's muscle shirt because stuff's happening here and it hurts and I'm trying to stop it <laughs> and this is the only thing I could wear so and I'm a mess right now my son's crying if you can if you hear him he's crying because he's getting a haircut so let's start off by thank you to everyone that has messaged me called me helped me everything in every way um, with this pregnancy like all the encouragements all the prayers everything there's so many people like all my church family all sarah and fran that's helped me through all this along the way my mom my aunts my dad my sister my sister lisa like so many people so many people they they've helped me through all of this and I don't, I just pray for the Lord to just bless them so abund abundantly. Like, we've had so much help. So, so much help. Like, it is unbelievable how God works through his children to help. I just want to thank y'all. Thank y'all so, so much for everything. For everything. Um, so, 
Uh, let's start off. This is gonna be a long, long vlog, so get ready. <laughs> Wednesday, the what is what was it? The twenty first, I think. My calendar's right there. The twenty first, um, my water broke. I didn't know that my water broke, but my water broke. And I've never experienced that before. I've never experienced my water breaking. So I was freaking out. Like I was like, I don't know what's happening. I don't know why I'm this all this all this stuff's coming out. Like so the only person that I could think of to call was Fran. Because my mom was at work, you know, my I'm not gonna call my dad. <laughs> my sister is at work. So who do I call? What do I do? Like what am I supposed to go? Is this my water breaking? What am I doing? So I called Fran. And friends like I don't know I don't know what I don't know what to tell you why are you calling me like I'm not a doctor she's like call Sarah so we three wait Sarah and Sarah's like well let me call my friend I think I think her friend is a nurse or an RN or a doctor I'm not too sure but we three wait her we four wait her I think and I told her what was going on I told her what was happening and she said call your doctor so they can have it in their records that you called, that your water broke, and you're going to the emergency room. And it's like, okay. She's like, it sounds like to me like your water broke. So I was like, I was like, okay. So then, you know, we hang up. Sarah calls me back, and she's like, I'll be there in a minute. Let me take a shower. I'm going to take you. So I was like, okay. So I start freaking out. I was like, what do I take? Am I supposed to, like, what do I do? I don't know what to do. She's like, pack a bag just in case. She's like, take the baby's bag just in case. And I was like, okay. And so throughout all this, you know, I'm like, I'm not supposed to be due yet. Why did my water break? I'm not supposed to be, you know, it's a, a back and forth thing. So I was like, I'm freaking out. Like, what if I do have him? Like, what's going to happen? And I don't even have a lot of things ready. And so she comes and I was like, I don't know if I want to go. I don't know if I want to go. I don't want to go. I want to wait. And she's like, oh, all this time? She's like, you've been wanting him out, and now you want to wait? <laughs> and I was like, everything in me is telling me to go, but I want to wait. And she's like, no, we got to go. So I was like, okay. I was like, let's go. So she grabs my bag, and so we go. We take off, and we go in, into the hospital, and we go to labor and delivery. And they have me in the room, and she's like, we're going to do a test on you if your water broke. And she's like, that's going to determine whether your water did break or not. So I was like, okay. I just take this off. My head's hurting. And so she ta we take, I take the test. You know, we t I take this test. And so she's like, no. She's like, your water didn't break. You know, it's false alarm. It could be because you wet yourself or it could be sweat. I was like, I practically peed myself. Like, there's so much fluid there I was like it's not it's not pee I wouldn't know if it if that would it if that's what it is I was like I know my body I know that's not what it is and she's like well well let's call your doctor blah blah and and he wants me to stay overnight again so I was like and I just left from there and I was like oh my gosh here we go this whole staying overnight this whole everything else and so we they put us in a room you know Sarah stays with me for a little bit and she leaves and then I like I just keep fluid just keeps coming out like I'm sorry TMI I'm sorry but it just it won't stop like for like three or four hours just non-stop fluid coming out and I'm contracting because I ask her am I having contractions or are they just pain She's like, no, you're having contractions. And then they get worse. Every hour, they started getting worse and worse and worse. And then fluid just constant. I mean, not like a lot, but just like a little bit coming out, coming out, coming out. And so it was like 11. My nurse comes in and to check on me. And I said, can you check to see if I dilated any? I was like, because this, this ain't normal. This isn't, no, this isn't normal. I just feel like it's not... It's not normal for me. She's like, yeah. She's like, I was gonna come check you. She's like, I just have a feeling. So I was like, okay. 
So she texts me and I'm like dilated. <laughs> She's like, oh my gosh. She's like, let me call the on-call doctor and see what she wants to do. She's like, okay, you're going to have the baby tonight. And I was like, excuse me? I'm going to what? She's like, you're going to have the baby tonight. And I was like, uh, okay. So then like i'm like okay what do i do like i'm i'm having the baby tonight who do i call what do i do i'm freaking out like so i call my husband and i'm like well you need to come up here and i was like because we're having a baby tonight and then i i don't like I don't, I don't know and he my husband comes up here and they start prepping me they start you know all this stuff all the ivs all this mess and the on-call doctor comes in the Med, whatever he is, I can't think of the word. The one that pumps in medicine in you. I can't think of the word. I know what it is. I just can't think of it. He comes in. He introduces himself. He says who he is. The the surgeon comes in. She in introduces herself. And, like, it's just, like, nonstop, like, going. People coming in and out, introducing themselves, who's going to be in there, and all this stuff. And it was, like, going really fast. And... And the, when the lady was putting the IV in me, um, she was taking her time. And I was so glad she was taking her time because it made me like, okay, I'm, gif I'm fixing to go in surgery. I'm fixing to have a baby. Let me just calm myself down for a minute. And so, you know, my husband comes, they prep him. We go into the room. They try to do the where they put that thing in your back for your medicine and they just mess up like they I don't know they they can't find it I don't know what was going on like it took them a while to put that medicine in the back in my back and still I could feel them cutting me <laughs> and she, I felt it and I said you need to stop she's like why is it because I feel it she's like what do you feel like I feel like needles and so they start pumping me more and more and more and it oh my gosh it wasn't like pain it was like pressure like painful pressure like I could feel them open me up I can feel them trying to get him out like oh my gosh like just thinking about it right now makes me want to cry because it was like I was like cry so painful so then, you know, they finally get me numb and they finally pull him out and I feel them like put, put him on top of my legs. And when I felt that and I felt him moving, I was like, okay, he's good. And I, I just knock out. My husband was like, you just knocked out. He's like, you're snoring. You're, I was like, I was, oh my gosh. The next thing I remember is being in the recovery room my mom was beside me my husband was beside me the bait they're feeding him his bottle and his sugar was a little low and so they fed him and it, it got better and so then they took me into a room we waited there for a little bit because i did the the chest the skin to skin and then we went into a room and we went into the room it was time to feed him again and so I was trying to feed him, trying to feed him, trying to put the bottle in his mouth, and he wouldn't take it. He wouldn't eat. And so the nurse came in, and she's like, you know, you need to feed him, this and that. So I'm over here trying to feed him, trying to wake him up, you know, and he he don't, he don't want to eat. And so they check his sugar, and his sugar was really, really low, like dangerously low. And so after that, the pediatrician comes in and she's like i'm sorry she's like we have to take him we have to take him to, to NICU and he has to stay in there and my heart and like it just like dropped <laughs> i was like what like what does that mean what's going on she's like we have to put an iv in him until his sugar is regular and we have to just watch him so to me, I was like, okay, it's going to be overnight. He's going to be fine, whatever. Well, then overnight went to the next day. 
we could go see him you know we fed him they i mean they poked him and everything and like i mean his sugars were up and down like it wasn't regulating and so they kept him another night and so i'm like what's like what's going on like what is happening and like it just felt like like I felt like I was losing control like like what's going on I don't even know what's happening I don't know I don't know what to expect I don't know what to I don't know I don't know what's going on and so I had these moments of like up and down and frustration and like no I can't be frustrated like I have to trust God you know he gave me him and This is a hard video to make. <laughs> so then, I think it was night three. No, the second night, I think. Um, he was in better, but he wasn't, his sugars were doing really good. He was eating by himself. But he wasn't eating the minimum amount. And so they had to put a feeding tube through his nose. And that's how they fed him for a little bit. And uh, then after that, you know, it was just like, I don't know, like, was, I don't, I don't even know how to explain the feeling. Like, it was just like a moment, moments of like, what next? Like, what's going to happen? What's, like, right now all it's all up to Zeke it's all up to him it's all up to him to like get better and so I called my aunt and my aunt is my mentor my spiritual mentor she called my mom and she's like I saw what's what's happening and she's like She's like, you and your husband, she's like, that we need to stand together and we need to pray and we need to demand the enemy to, you know, be out and we need to rebuke him. And, and so, I don't know. In that moment, I was just like, I've done everything. Like, I've prayed over him. I've declared over him. I've, I've pleaded with God. Like, I've done everything. And when my aunt told me that, I was like, I never thought about doing that. I never thought about, you know, going in there and demanding the enemy to be, to flee. And so that night, we're, we're going to go feed him. And so I told my husband, you know, we need to do that. That's what we need to do. We need to stand together as his parents. We need to stand together as his parents and lay hands on him and demand the enemy to flee. So we did. We, you know, we laid hands on him. We demanded the enemy to flee. And we rebuked him from Zeke and from the rest of those babies that were in there. I mean, we just prayed. Like, we prayed. And, you know, after that, we got a lot of peace. And we just played music for him, and, you know, we just were talking with him. I just kept, I kept telling him that he was strong and that he was a warrior and... So we left it. We left it there. So then we went back to the room and this was night I think two or three, I don't remember. We went back to the room and we had the most amazing nurse taking care of him. I don't remember her name because I didn't I didn't go in there. But we had the most amazing nurse taking care of him. And so I was like, okay, I'm not going to call. 
I'm not going to worry. I'm going to get some rest. I'm going to try to take care of myself and let God be God. And so I did. And so I think it was like four in the morning I woke up and I was like, okay, like he's been there all night. He's been there from, I think his, the last feeding was at 8 or 10, 8 or 10. And so he's been there all night. Like, he's, I know he's good. I know he's going to come out. And I was like, I'm going to call. <laughs> so I called. And I asked how he was doing. And she said that his sugars were, like, perfect. His sugars were perfect. He was eating by himself the minimum amount and more and mind you before this the I guess like the head doctor that's in the NICU he came and talked to us and he was telling us that he wanted to wean him off the IV so that way he can do it he can you know he can build his sugar and that he wants him out of the NICU room and that he said he goes if his sugars are between um, 50 and 60 knock him one down like he was at 10 units he's like so if it's between 50 and 60 knock him down to 9 he's like if it's between uh, 60 and 70 knock him down 2 if it's between 70 and 80 knock him down 3 so I was like you know we're like okay that's a plan that's what that's our goal that's what we're striving for and so that night you know when I called it was like almost five I think I called and she's like yeah she's like he's doing so good and that he's eating good and um that they knocked him down all the way to four and that he just like like he just did it by himself like he just and so oh my gosh you talk about thankfulness and gratefulness and praising and I just oh my gosh and that's where it started it started from that day till we took him home like the next that that morning I think that the next morning they took his IV out he was eating good they still had the tube in his nose but they took his IV out and we could finally give him a bath and like I mean he just he just like <laughs> the enemy took his hands off of him and God took control like oh my gosh like it was like night and day from when they first put him in there and he's doing so so good and so um so then today uh well then yesterday they had to put him on the the light the jaundice because he had a little bit of yellow not a lot just a little bit you could tell his cheeks were getting a little yellow and a little on his chest. So, we t they took his IV out. They, I mean, he's doing so good, you know, all this stuff. And then they had to put the light on him. And then to me, I was like, <sighs> another thing. Like, another thing that we have to battle. But then I was like, And then I was like, I can't be like that. Like, I have to be patient. I have to be patient, and I know God is working, and I have to be patient. And so they told us, the more we leave the light on him, the faster it'll work. So to me, I was like, I'm not going to go feed him. I'm not going to go visit him. I'm going to let them do it and leave the light on him, on him as much as possible. And this nurse that was there that night, oh my gosh, they I guess they switch out nurses every every day. And this nurse, she was the most sweetest, amazing nurse ever. Like she's and we were talking to her and we're like, you know, uh, cause the nurse before her, I don't know, didn't want to mess with him, didn't want to feed him. Like she just kept feeding him through the tube. And I told we told her, you know, that that's he doesn't need that. Like. He's, when we go feed him, he, he drinks all of it. And every other nurse that's been in here, they feed him, and he drinks all of it. I was like, I don't know why. And she's like, Whoop. she's like, I am going to do everything I can so you can take him home tomorrow, which is today. So I was like, okay. So then, uh, 
oh my gosh that just gave me so much hope <laughs> and so my husband walked in and so you know we're like okay we're gonna let let's just gotta work let's just gotta work and so this morning we called <laughs> this morning we called and he did so good he she said that he ripped out his feeding tube but she's like out that she didn't put it back in because he didn't need it um a bunch of the test results came back good they did his hearing tests and it came back good they did his echo test came back good like everything came back good he did so good last night and so we're like are we are we gonna be able to take him home and she's like it sounds like it so i was like oh, okay so today today was like chaos today was just like you know then he needed a car seat test and the doctor still needed to talk to us and they still needed to discharge him and and like it was just like everything was going i guess in order of how we were supposed to take him home and man it was just you talk about emotional roller coaster you talk about praising him during the storm you talk about you know pleading with god and having faith and trusting in him when nothing else looks right you know and man it was just these past five days have been I'm just ready at that point I was just ready I just want to go home I just want to take my baby home and just leave me alone just leave us alone stop poking him stop messing with him like I was just but I knew and that's what me and that one of the nurses had talked about you know I know that his health comes first I know he needs to be healthy I know he needs to be perfect to come home and but it's just a little frustrating <laughs> like I don't know but he came back so perfect he came back so good he came back better than ever because we surrendered him to god and we just let god be god like we just okay we're not gonna stress we're not gonna worry this is all on you we're gonna let you be who you're supposed to be and now he's here <laughs> just changed him and fed him and he's doing so good like he's doing so so good and I'm just I'm at a loss for words of how God works I guess not works but who God is like I don't know I don't even know how to explain it I don't even know what to explain because it's like once we once we switched our mindset of of us letting go and and God being God like he just like quick okay I got you now I got your hand back and it just turned around like everything just turned around and he it just became like so clear like I don't know but It's, I'm a mess. I feel a mess. Oh, and I, um, man, I'm my like mine's like everywhere. But I got this little package, this little nice little package, and it goes all the way down to my C-section. I don't know what it is. It's a pump. It's a vacuum pump. I don't know. I was supposed to take it off Wednesday. Um, it's like, like this long piece of tape and plastic, and they have it over my scar, and so every once in a while it suctions, and it's protected, and they call it a second layer of defense or something like that for your scar. And but it's, I don't mind it 
because it's it where it's working like I'm not leaking I'm not it's not infected like it's it's everything's good but having to carry this around everywhere and having to use a bathroom having to take a shower all this stuff with this and it's this is what it looks like like that I haven't leaked at all none and that's what it looks like the battery lasts for a week and Thursday I think will be a week but he's gonna take it off Wednesday so hopefully good news from that praying for good news but it's I, can't, I forget I forget about it and I don't have to carry it but it's been long it's been very long but I'm grateful for the nurses and the doctors and everyone that worked really hard to get him home and like they really truly worked to get him home they did everything in their power to get him where he needs to be in his sugars and where he needs to be with his feeding and getting him in 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 a on a schedule and like they did everything and man i'm just grateful for them so so grateful for them and they understood like my frustrations like they were so comforting and like some of them even prayed for, for us and like they were just they're i don't know i couldn't even i don't know but i think that's it for right now that's gonna be it because i'm exhausted i'm tired and i don't know i'll i'll record more tomorrow but I'll upload this tonight because I'm just exhausted right now. But I'm just so grateful for this little for this little miracle that's beside me. Like we're so ready to take him home. I know my husband was frustrated too and we're just so ready to just bring him home healthy and and just we're ready. But but yeah. Um I'll see y'all guys tomorrow. And yeah so whatever you're doing if you're cooking in the background if you're just putting this in the background hopefully you're having a good night a good day a good afternoon whatever you're having and i will see you guys tomorrow